Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. In this video, we're going to discuss the 10 C's of survival. When you hear that phrase, the name Dave Canterbury is often referenced. He was the one that kind of came up with these concepts of 10 survival items that you would want to have. And he's a survivalist. A lot of preppers reference his information. I was able to actually meet him a few years ago at SHOT Show. And what we'll do in this video is we'll go through these 10 C's. And the reason we're doing this is because if you're doing a bug out bag or an EDC, a get home bag, whatever bag you, you wanna create, having these 10 C's as a foundation gives you a good solid layer to build on top of. And if you have these, it puts you way ahead. And a lot of times some of these items are things that sometimes people overlook, but these serve as a great foundation, a starting point. So what we'll do in this video is we'll go through these items. I'll do kind of a small, uh, modification based on kind of a city or a suburban urban environment will make a few small changes but overall we'll follow the basic guidelines that he lays down so let's go ahead and jump in please consider subscribing to our newsletter by clicking on the link in the description and comment section below if you enjoy this video please subscribe and click the like button to help the channel grow cover the first item on the 10 C's of survival is cover cover is your shelter for example, we've got a tarp. Now this one has reflective, uh, you know, inside. So if you're in a situation where you were setting up a structure and maybe you have, you know, a fire inside or you want to wrap yourself in this, this has a reflective liner, but a standard tarp that you can get, you know, at Home Depot, Walmart, etc., will work just fine. Again, the goal with this one is to think about shelter, protecting yourself from the elements. And again, whenever it comes to survivalism, that's always your first issue you have to resolve is making sure you are protected from the elements. Now, you can see there's a few other items here. This one is a bivy. Where I live in Southern California, it doesn't get overly cold at night, so I don't carry sleeping bags in my bug out bags. We typically just have some kind of a bivy for each one of our bug out bags. This is a poncho. Again, this is really small. It's lightweight, doesn't take up a lot of space. And if there's a situation, obviously, where you get in rain, uh, that can lead to hypothermia if you don't protect yourself. And then a Mylar survival blanket is what they're <laughs> calling this. It's just a Mylar blanket, that's all. And again, you can get these for pennies on the dollar. And the last item is a baseball cap. I'm going bald, unfortunately. I can't fight it anymore. And uh, having my head protected against the sun is really critical. So all these items, as we go through each one of these categories, I'll put links in the description section if you want to check out each one of these. But again, the first item that we've covered here is shelter or cover. Cutting. The next on our list is cutting, tools that allow you to cut. There's a few different ways that I kind of broke this down. This, these items over here are your fixed blade knives. This is a saw, and then you've got your multi-tools, and then finally an EDC pocket knife, everyday carry kind of type of knife. Now, when it comes to fixed blade knives, there's a lot of options on the market. I've had a lot over the years, but you want to look for typically what's called a full tang knife. Um, you know, it's got a thick uh, back to it, essentially allows you to process wood. You can baton it. Uh, this one is actually from Survival Lily. She just sent this to me and I'll be doing a review on this pretty soon. I've owned a lot of fixed blade knives over the years. Hands down, this one's easily my favorite. This thing just, I don't know. I love the way it's built, fits perfect in my hand. I love the size of balance, but I'll be doing a review of that here pretty soon. Uh, again, as I mentioned a second ago, you're gonna wanna look for full tang. You see how this goes all the way back. It's thick throughout. It doesn't, a lot of times you'll see some knives, what they'll do is instead of, and by the way, you can look down here too. What they'll do is this part will kinda go to a small little, uh, little piece right here. And these you don't, these are solid through and through. So you're gonna wanna look for again, a full tang knife whenever you go to get those. Uh, these are your more affordable entry level, nothing wrong with them, but uh, again, I've used these for different purposes, lightweight, very affordable. I think you can get these around 15 bucks or so. Now, when it comes to saws, uh, again, we're talking about cutting here, right? So we're processing. If you've got to process firewood, this is a smaller silky saw. Uh, the Canadian prepper turned me on to these years ago. I've got different sil uh, silky saws in all of our gear and some of the things that we have. Multi-tools, I've used Leatherman's for years when I was in Boy Scouts, I used a Swiss Army knife, but hey, Leatherman's, I've come to love these things. Uh, there's so many different models on the option. This one I've had for over 20 years now. I carried this when I was overseas and uh, just really practical, tough little guys. And again, just your everyday pocket knife here or you know, just a typical EDC. 
So again, these serve so many purposes, whether it's coming to you know process firewood, whether it's cutting different items, protection. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could go on and on. It, it, there's innumerable amount of uses for these items. But again, the second item is cutting. The next item on our list of 10 C's is combustion. Now, these items, I typically just carry them in a small Ziploc bag to kind of keep them organized. And I'll just kind of go here and show you the different items. This is your standard Bic uh, lighter. Honestly, out of all the items that we have here, this is hands down my favorite. I carry these in pretty much everything. I've got some tape wrapped around just kind of a uh, backup there for tape, ferrocerium rod, uh, matches in a waterproof container. The wet fire, uh, this is just kind of an assister, assistant rather to getting a fire started. You, you know, you can put this on different um, kindling that you have and it just helps you get the fire going. Nothing wrong with a little help. And then tin foil is the last item here. If I'm having to start a fire on the wet ground, uh, you know, or just want a surface where I can scrape off some magnesium before I start it, I, I just want this option. It's, it's so small, you know, lightweight, doesn't take up any space. So again, fire, uh, combustion, you know, obviously when it comes to survival, fire is one of your most critical elements to, you know, cook food, stay warm, boil water. I mean, the list goes on and on and on signaling. Uh, but again, having multiple options for starting a fire is always important. If for whatever reason, one of these three done, done work, or, you know, I've got another backup option. Um, when it comes to preps, typically the things that are most critical, you want multiple options. The old saying, you know, two is one and one is none. Um, I, I take that, you know, just one step further, I go with three on fire. Container. The next item on our 10 C's is containers. Now, there's, again, a lot of different options on the market. This one I carry on a typical daily basis. Um, this is a quart. I, I currently am training for a marathon, so I'm drinking tons of water. So I just always have this with me pretty much where, everywhere I go. In a lot of our bug out bags, I have the stainless steel option. This is a clean canteen. You can actually boil water in this. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to take off this plastic top, but these, you know, I've used these for years. They're pretty, uh, pretty beefy, you can take a beating. I do have these in our bug out bags, but also I have these usually as an option. Uh, a lot of our bug out bags, we have water bladders, we have uh, different, you know, means by which to store water. Where I live, water's a scarcity. So if I'm out and there's an emergency and I need water, I always wanna make sure I have different options to store and carry it. Can't live typically around three days without water. So this for me is a high priority. One other additional note, again, if you live in any kind of urban suburban environment or live in the city, I keep these in our bags, my uh, EDC or bug out bags. Uh, these are your uh, keys that you can use, a Silcock key to open up a water faucet on a lot of standard buildings. You'll, if you go to Walmart or Kmart and look at the side, you'll see water faucets, but you won't see the, the typical turn, you know, the knob, and you'll see, you know, usually like a little square. And this is what this is for. You can use these to actually open up that water source. Uh, so yeah, this point, water containers, that's the, what is it, third or fourth C. The next item on our list of C's is cordage. This is your standard 550 paracord, and it's got a lot of different applications. Uh, again, when you think of about it from a survival perspective, having the ability to whether, you know, set up a shelter, um, you know, tie things together, uh, you know, I mean, you could go on and on and on. A list of things that you can do with paracord uh, is, it's, there's a lot of options. And I believe this one's about 100 feet in length. And this is from a company called Survivor Cord. It's pretty fascinating. If you look them up online, you can actually open the end of these up and they've got a lot of different, I'm sorry if I can get that into focus. This one's burnt at the end, obviously, to keep it from, uh, it's fray, you know, to keep it from fraying. But inside of these, they have a lot of different tiny little cords within that can uh, serve a lot of uh, uses. And again, I'll post a link to this one in the description section below. But paracord is one of those items you definitely want to have. Candlelight. The next item on our list of C's is candle light. Obviously, we're talking about light. So I've got so many different flashlights that I've picked up over the years, use them for different purposes. I've got, <laughs> I believe this is around 10,000 lumens. It's something ridiculous. I've got, you know, some of the smaller handheld flashlights. Some can clip on my baseball cap. This one I think is typically one of the ones that I, I carry on a daily basis, just a small, easy to use flashlight. Again, I can clip this on my baseball, on the bill of my baseball cap if I you know, want a quick headlight. 
this one I believe takes AA batteries. And some of these flashlights, you can actually charge them via USB. Some of these, you can clip this on the end and you've got uh, the ability to quickly charge them. Now out of everything, the one that I most of us probably prefer is headlamps. The ability to put this on your hand and keep your hands free is, it's pretty critical. So obviously in any kind of an emergency situation, having light is gonna be a high priority. If you're stumbling around the darkness, tripping over things, you know, injuring yourself, uh, that's not gonna be a good starting point. So always consider when you're looking at, again, a foundation of what you're gonna build for survival items, strongly consider what type of lights you wanna use. I'm not gonna go into detail about lumens, uh, things like that, but I personally, I like the option of having chargeable flashlights with a USB charger, because again, I carry, uh, you know, like hand cranks in a lot of my bags so I can, you know, power different USB devices. I, I typically have some kind of, whether it's solar panel or, uh, you know, solar generator. I just like having both options as well as, you know, having just the ability to swap out a battery if I need to. Cotton bandana. The next item on our list is a bandana. Now this is a Shimog. It folds out to, I believe, three by three, pretty large. And the uses for this are numerous. You can use this to pour water through to pre-filter out water. If you were uh, to break your arm or have some type of injury, you could use this to create a sling. You could use this for a head covering. You could use this to cover your face if there's a fire or you need to filter out the air. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, now this one's obviously a larger one. I just like these uh, bigger ones, but if you wanna pick up a smaller one online, again, whatever fits for your particular case, but consider one of these in your survival items. Compass. One of the most important items, obviously. It's unfortunate a lot of times when you turn on the news and you hear about people that get lost. I often wonder if they had some ability to orient themselves, how the outcome might've been different. I've been in a situation where I got turned around, I didn't have a compass. And when you're in the woods and you don't have a perspective to see everything, it's easy to quickly get disoriented and having the ability to always understand where you're going uh, is critical. So having, uh, again, there's so many different options on the market when it comes to compasses. Uh, this one, my brother actually gave to me years ago, about 20 some odd years ago. These are the cool kind that have the, uh, the radiation uh, symbol on the back. Uh, I believe I forget what the exact element in here that you know helps it light up under um, dark, and, you know, to make it iridescent. But having the ability to orient yourself Obviously tied to a map is ideal, but consider a compass. Cargo tape. For cargo tape, I prefer Gorilla Tape. I've got these in all our bug out bags, my EDC bags, um, vehicle get home bags, a Jeep. I, gosh, I've got this stuff stored everywhere. If there's some type of uh, emergency, something gets broken, and I just need to kind of MacGyver my way through the situation and just patch it up till you know, get something fixed, this is, uh, this is my backup plan, right? So having that as a survival item, it's just a good ideal as a backup. Communication. The next item on our list that's so important is having the ability to communicate. If there's a disaster, being able to touch you know, base with your family, finding out where everybody is, it's gonna be really important. Now, obviously most of us in this day and age have some type of cell phone that we always carry on our person, but if there's an emergency and it forces our towers offline or whatever may happen, we can't use this anymore, well, having a means, a backup means is important. I keep these uh, Balfang ham radios in our bug out bags. I'm actually working on my license or rather I'll be taking the test to get a ham radio license. I was gonna take it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I had to reschedule to September, but this is a critical key component of communicating. Now you can pick these up for next to nothing. I think about $29 on Amazon. And one other uh, means of communication that I will bring up, I bought this last year. I believe on Black Friday, and this is a Garmin InReach Mini. This is a small satellite device. You can actually connect this to your cell phone. And again, even if the towers are down, this can work via this device and you can actually send text messages over satellite. So if all communication is down in your area, you can still reach out via satellite. It's independent of the grid in your area. So again, make sure you have some means of communicating, whether that's with local individuals, friends, family, or the ability to communicate outside after a disaster. Cash. The last item on our list is cash. Dave Canterbury doesn't have this in his 10 C's, but living in an urban suburban environment, to me, this is important. If the grid were to go down, 
power's knocked offline. Don't expect to be able to use your debit card, your credit card. You're not gonna be able to go probably to an ATM to withdraw cash. So have cash on hand. If you walk into a store and the power's out, maybe in the first few hours, they'll still accept cash. And again, make sure that you have small denominations. Don't just carry a $100 bill and think that's gonna be enough. Probably should carry some tens, fives, ones, break it down to small units so that if you, again, have to go in and the cashier can't open their cash register because the power's knocked off, at least you can be able to say, hey, uh, you know, Joe, I know this item is $20, you know, here's 25, here's 30, whatever. And that way you're able to pick it up. They're probably not gonna care in those first few hours, but at least you can get what you need. Canvas needle. Now, I put this one last and I was gonna skip it. This is in Dave Canterbury's 10th season now. As you can see, I believe this is number 11. I just mention it because he does. Honestly, I never carry, I've ever carried these with me in ER bags. Uh, his recommendation is for different purposes. But again, if you want it, it's on his list. I just have never thought of a purpose for suburban urban environment to have a needle with me. But hey, could be wrong, think about it. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to, again, serve as a foundation, a starting point when you're building your bug out bag, get home bag, EDC, vehicle bug out bag, whatever the bag it is you're building. Having these 10 items are gonna be a great starting point to build on top of. If you have any feedback, any thoughts, any questions, please post those in the comment section. And as always, stay safe out there.